Chapter 5 The Universe. The zero equals two equation Garasara, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Yes, I admit everything. It is all my fault. Looking over my past writings, I do see that my only one appointed attempt to set forth a sound ontology was my early fumbling letter brochure Barashith 18. Since then, I seem to have kept assuming that everybody knew all about it, referring to it, quoting it, but never sitting down seriously to demonstrate the thesis, or even to state it in set terms. Chapter 0 of Magic in Theory and Practice skates gently over it, the Naples arrangement in the Book of Oath dodges it with really diabolical ingenuity. I ask myself why. It is exceedingly strange, because every time I think of the equation, I am thrilled with the keen glow of satisfaction that this sempiternal riddle of the Sphinx should have been answered at last. So then let me now give myself the delight, and you the comfort, of stating the problem from its beginning, and proving the soundness of the solution of showing that the contradiction of this equation is unthinkable are you ready? Forward. Paddle. A. We are aware. B. We cannot doubt the existence whether real or illusory makes no difference, of something, because doubt itself is a form of awareness. c. We lump together all that of which we are aware under the convenient name of existence, or the universe. Cosmos is not so good for this purpose, that word implies order, which in the present stage of our argument, is a mere assumption. d. We also tend to think of the universe as containing things of which we are not aware. But this is altogether unjustifiable, although it is difficult to think at all without making some such assumption. For 18 C. Crowley, Collected Works. Instance, one may come upon a new branch of knowledge, say, histology or Hammurabi or the language of the Iroquois or the poems of the Hermaphrodite of Panormata. It seems to be there already waiting for us, we simply cannot believe that we are making it all up as we go along. For all that, it is sheer sophistry, we may merely be unfolding the contents of our own minds. Then again, does a thing cease to exist if we forget it? The answer is that one cannot be sure. Personally, I feel convinced of the existence of an universe outside my own immediate awareness, but it is true, even so, that it does not exist for me unless and until it takes its place as part of my consciousness. E. All this paragpody is in the nature of a digression, for what you may think of it does not at all touch the argument of this letter. But it had to be put in, just to prevent your mind from raising irrelevant objections. Let me continue, then, from C. F. Something is 19. This something appears incalculably vast and complex. How did it come to be? This, briefly, is the riddle of the universe which has been always the first preoccupation of all serious philosophers since men began to think at all. G. The orthodox idiot answer, usually wrapped up in obscure terms in the hope of concealing from the inquirer the fact that it is not an answer at all, but an evasion, is, God created it. Then, obviously, who created God? Sometimes we have a demi-urge, a creative God behind whom is an eternal formless greatness anything to confuse the issue. Sometimes the universe is supported by an elephant, he, in turn, stands on a tortoise. By that time it is